Dante's Inferno, Canto 26, The Eighth Bolgia, Evil Counselors, Ulysses and Diamond, Ulysses' Last Voyage. Rejoice, O Florence, since thou art so great, that over sea and land thou beatest thy wings, and throughout hell thy name is spread abroad. Among the thieves five citizens of thine like these I found, whence shame comes unto me, and thou nearby to no great honor risest. But if when morn is near our dreams are true, fill shalt thou in a little time from now what Prado, if none other craves for thee. And if it now were, it were not too soon, would that it were, seeing it needs must be, for twill aggrieve me more than more I age. We went our way, and up along the stairs the Bournes had made us to descend before, remounted my conductor and drew me. In following the solitary path among the rocks and ridges of the crag, the foot without the hand sped not at all. Then sorrowed I, and sorrow now again, when I direct my mind to what I saw, and more my genius curb that I am wont, that it may run not unless virtue guide it, so that if some good star or better thing have given me good, I may myself not grudge it. As many as the hind who on the hill rest, at the time when he who lights the world his countenance keeps least concealed from us, while as the flock gives place unto the gnat, seeth the glowworms down along the valley, perchance there where he plows and makes his vintage. With flames as manifold resplendent all was the eighth bulger. As I grew aware as soon as I was where the depth appeared, and such as he who with the bears avenged him, behold, beheld Elijah's chariot at departing. What time the steeds to heaven erect uprose? For with his eye he could not follow it so as to see aught else than flame alone, even as a little cloud ascending upward. Thus each along the gorge of the entrenchment was moving, for not one reveals the theft, and every flame a sinner steals away. I stood upon the bridge uprisen to see, so that, if I had seized not on a rock, down had I fallen without being pushed. And the leader who beheld me so attent exclaimed, Within the fires the spirits are, each swathes himself with what that wherewith he burns. My master, I replied, by hearing thee I am more sure, but I surmised already it might be so. And already you wish to ask thee, who is within that fire, which comes so cleft at top, it seems uprising from the pyre, where was Eteocles with his brother placed? He answered me, Within there are tormented Ulysses and Diamond, and thus together they unto vengeance run as unto wrath. And there within their flame do they lament the ambush of the horse, which made the door whence issued forth the Roman's gentle seed. Therein is wept the craft, for which being dead, Dadamia still deplores Achilles, and pain for the palladium there is born. If they within those sparks possess the power to speak, I said, Thee, master, much I pray, and re-pray, that the prayer be worth a thousand, that thou make no denial of awaiting unto the horned flame shall hither come. Thou seest that with desire I lean towards it. And he to me, Worthy is that entreaty of much applause, and therefore I accept it. But take heed that thy tongue restrain itself. Leave me to speak, because I have conceived that, thou, that which thou wishest. For they might disdain perchance, since they were Greeks, discourse of thine. When now the flame had come unto that point, where to my leader it seemed time and place after this fashion did I hear him speak, O ye who are twofold within one fire, if I deserved of you while I was living, if I deserved of you or much or little when in the world I wrote the lofty verses, do not move on, but one of you declare whither, being lost, he went away to die. Then of the antique flame the greater horn murmuring began to wave itself about, even as a flame doth with which the wind fatigues. Thereafterward the summit to and fro, moving as if it were the tongue that spake, it uttered forth the voice and said, When I from Circe had departed, 
who consumed me more than a year near unto Gator, or ever yet Aeneas named it so, nor fondness for my son, nor reverence for my old father, nor the due affection which joyous should have made Penelope, could overcome within me the desire. I had to be experienced of the world, and of the vice and virtue of mankind. But I put forth on the high open sea with one sole ship, and that small company by which I never had deserted been. Both of the shores I saw as far as Spain, far as Morocco, and the Isle of Sards, and the others which that sea bathes round about. I and my company were old and slow when at the narrow passage we arrived, where Hercules his landmarks set as signals. That man no further onward should adventure. On the right hand behind me I left I Seville, and on the other already had left Cuta. O oh, brothers, who amid a hundred thousand perils, I said, have met on, have come unto the west, to this so inconsiderable vigil which is remaining of your senses still, be ye unwilling to deny the knowledge following the sun of the unpeopled world. Consider ye the seed from which ye sprang. Ye were not made to live like unto brutes, but for the pursuit of virtue and knowledge. So eager did I render my companions with this brief exhortation for the voyage, that then I hardly could have held them back. And having turned our stern into the morning, we of the oars made wings for our mad flight, evermore gaining on the larboard side. Already all the stars of the other pole that night beheld, and ours so very low it did not rise above the ocean floor. Five times we kindled, and as many quenched had been the splendor underneath the moon, that we had entered into the deep pass when there appeared to us a mountain, dim from distance, and it seemed to me so high as I had never any one beheld. Joyful were we, and soon it turned to weeping, for out of the new land a whirlwind rose and smote upon the forepart of the ship. Three times it made her whirl with all the waters, but the fourth time it made the stern uplift, and the prow downward go, as pleased another, until the sea above us closed again. So I'll admit that I'm a little bit conflicted about this con uh, canto. If Canto 24 is one of my favorites on hypocrites, uh, Canto 26 is one of my least or confusing because Ulysses, and being Odysseus as well, is one of my, my favorite characters in, in literature. And uh, it's just, I mean, the Odyssey and uh, the Iliad are one of the best. And we uphold uh, Odysseus, Ulysses, to be a great figure, a wise figure, a figure that seeks wisdom. Um, he's wise amongst all of the soldiers of the Trojan War and the Iliad. He's not the one that jumps to battle all the time. He's seasoned. And yet, Dante portrays him very much differently in this canto. So in this canto, we're in the Eighth Bolgia, which is uh, of the counselors of fraud. And it's not to be uh, confused with deceivers. So deceivers are men who uh, trick for their own gain. Uh, I, I might One might trick you into giving them your money. They You might trick them into sex or to other crimes. Counselors of fraud counsel others to practice fraud. They get them get others to do things they get others to do things and so uh, the tr the the horror of this is whereas deceivers uh, thieves steal material goods or deceivers get you to give up your material goods in some way they manipulate you counselors of fraud are are spiritual thieves which is why they're one bullshit lower all right they and by doing so they rob you of something far more valuable than your your material goods they rob you of your integrity they get you to do something that you wouldn't otherwise do and so uh, that's why the counselors of fraud are in what's called the thievish fire here so 
they hide behind the flames. All, they're surrounded by flames. Anything that they say to you has to come through the flames. So we see in scripture a lot the tongue being described as a, as a wicked thing that spews forth both blessings and curses. And we see uh, the descent of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Tongues as a fire appeared, which parted and came to rest on each of them. There's something very much wrapped up with the idea of tongues and fire. And so if their tongues were, if their tongues caused men to to burn an eternity for their actions, then they would be consumed by flame. And everything that they said had to pass through that flame. But then back to Ulysses slash Odysseus. Um, the greatest part, though, is the the reason why Ulysses is here is because he convinced men to uh, create and execute the operation of the Trojan horse in the Trojan War. He convinced other men to deceive, to lie, to build a horse, get in that horse, and destroy Troy. And that's correct. I just, I, I don't know how I feel about the, the rest of it, but that is correct. And I think we have to kind of jettison our usual understanding of Odysseus, Ulysses, from the rest of Western literature to treat him as an entirely separate character here to see the point that uh, Dante is making. Here, Ulysses got other men to do his dirty work for him. And here, instead of making it back home uh, to his wife Penelope and to Telemachus and to his father and to taking back uh, Ithaca, he decides to go exploring. He wanted to become a more wise and seasoned man and uh, experienced of the world, as Dante puts it, before he gets home. And how does he do that? He can't do that on his own. He's in a small ship. He has to get men to do it, other men to do it, to help row his oars for him, row his boat to take him to where he wanted to go. And to add insult to injury, how does he evoke that in them? How does he adjure them to do what he wants to do? He says it's for the sake of pursuit of virtue and of knowledge. And that is why this Ulysses is in hell. Is he didn't just convince them through wicked means or ennoble gain. He sold them that it was for the sake of virtue and knowledge. I think especially as an educator, that's something I have to be aware of, is to not bastardize wisdom for the sake of personal gain, much less counsel others to do so.